Okay, so in this video, I will teach you how to perform the virtual lab to find and learn about internal resistance and EMF. And the basic objectives of this, um, which I may want you to identify is, um, first of all, of course, I, I understand the idea of internal resistance, understand the idea of EMF, which is called the electromotive force, and also how to build the circuit uh, to measure to find out the internal resistance and of course the EMF as well uh, and later on we'll use a software to which is Excel to plot the graph uh, the relevant graph which you basically learned it in the previous video so if you haven't watched the video go back to that and watch it uh, and how to interpret uh, the graph to find the internal resistance and EMF so basically it's a slope and also the y-intercept if you rem remember so uh, this is how the circuit looks like, but then I will rebuild it again at the end. Uh, and so basic idea of the circuit is very simple. It's simply, because you don't want to make it so complicated, right? So basically what you have is, this is a dotted line by the way, and that represents the whole battery. This is a small resistor. And what you have outside is simply a, uh, variable resistor okay and and of course you need to have the emitter to measure the current and also the voltmeter and then you may ask oh, where do I connect the voltmeter do I connect here or do I connect here all right I give you a three second think about it the answer is it doesn't matter because it's all the same in fact, if you connect it here, it's also fine as well because there's only two things that you have. Assuming, of course, the emitter is ideal, which means resistance is zero. And of course, the voltmeter also ideal, which is resistance is infinity. And in that case, the potential difference across these two points will be the same no matter where you connect them. That means uh, voltage across the variable resistor will be the same as the voltage across the battery at to terminal okay and we'll use that for our calculation bear in mind that the equation that we use is v equals to epsilon minus i r small r in that case okay so um right now i'll demonstrate how you can build the circuit and how you can perform the experiment uh, by the end of this video i will want to give you a homework which is simply redo the whole thing maybe with a different value of um, the EMF and internal resistance you can adjust and also maybe you know some other things okay and then generate another graph uh, out of your own setting okay so first of all I'll show you how to get this uh, simulation I'll put the link in the description simply so you can refer to that or uh, you can actually always google it by uh, PHET PHET is simply the you know the I think this is from a university um, which I think there are many useful simulations I think I told you before and together with circuit on Google and then you can find the first one which is this one you click into it and you can find the simulator okay and this is how it looks like it takes a bit of time to load and then I will go for lab this one and as we said uh, the circuit diagram looks like this so let's just pull it out there are two kind of battery one is like more normal like from 0 to 120 and this is like high voltage I think we'll just need to use the more ordinary one okay and then we'll use our resistor and then we need some wired or oh, actually oh yeah we'll use our resistor I mean earlier we said we want to use a variable resistor but in this simulation it's not you know there's no Variable resistor, and so we'll just use this one, and then you can simply build a nice circuit. You can actually use one wire, but then I'll just try to show a more uh, neat systematic drawing. I mean, uh, diagram. You can also enable value so you can see it, and then for Y resistance, I will set it as tiny. So basically, I believe tiny means zero resistance along the connection wired. For the battery resistance, uh, th for demonstration purpose, I'll set it at 5 ohm. And for the battery, I will probably choose, let's choose 30. How about that? 
Okay, so in fact, 30 is the EMF already, and 5 ohm is the in, uh, resistance for the internal resistor. So these two basically are the answer already. And of course, in reality, when you do the practical activity, uh, you of course don't know about this. Right? You do not know about this at all. But then uh, now we are trying to do it and then try to pretend we don't know. We'll, we'll make a graph later on and then we'll compare with the answer to see whether that's right or not. Okay, and using the techniques. So it's more about uh, learning how to do it rather than finding out the answer. Okay, so uh, apparently we also need the 2 meter, which is volt meter. As we said, uh, it doesn't matter you connect to the battery or connect to, like you can see, this is 20 volt or this one it doesn't really matter it's also 20 volts for emitter there are two kind of emitter in this simulation one this one is more typical one which you have to connect in series i can demonstrate to you like this okay and then this one is simply um, a more modern design of uh, emitter Actually, um, it's actually quite interesting to talk about this, but then I think I will leave it uh, in the future if there is a chance. Uh, but the basic idea of this is uh, this emitter doesn't have to connect to the wire at all. So what it does is simply you hover the, the probe onto the wire anywhere, and then you can find out the current at that point. The basic idea is using the um, by measuring the magnetism, the magnetic field that it induced by the wire then you can measure the current right it's actually quite smart design but anyway for uh, demonstration then I maybe I think I'll just uh, stick with the emitter here okay and then uh, okay maybe I'll just place the voltmeter here and I think that's pretty much it all right if you like to change it that's fine too and yeah, I think we are good to go to measure things. So you can see that when we try to change the resistance from low resistance to a high resistance. By the way, when you are doing in um, real life, you may want to have an extra resistor here just to ensure that uh, the battery will not get too hot. Because if you set this resistor at zero, then in theory, if, if the internal resistance is very low, let's say oh here then it will get on fire so this is not a good thing for sure so um, maybe in, in reality you may want to set another reason or you don't want to go to the lowest right maybe you would want to stop at maybe uh, 3 ohm all right and do not go further anyway so right here roughly we can see that uh, this is something that you can do also go from low to high you can see the 2 meter emitter voltmeter the reading got a pretty nice change right pretty wide range of change so that means the number are set quite well um, that means the choice of the range are pretty uh, good in that case all right so then I think it's time for you to record some data and uh, which uh, I would do it on Excel so maybe I'll put put it like this okay it's, I think it's easier to read this case so I'll put down V and I I think that's all uh, some of you may think hey do I have to record down the R for this one you do not right and in reality when you use a variable resistor you probably would not know the exact resistance anyway and so I'll show you later on that uh, you don't actually have to know this all right and you can figure out the two number on this okay so follow me here so let's write down the first one uh, when it is like this one okay so voltage 8.57 i is 4.29 and then i change to maybe 4 and so 13.33 3.33 and then 6 and in fact you don't have to have the um, fix i mean when you're doing the real that you will slide if you remember like the real that is uh, there's a slide that you slide through uh, you may not have the resistance that systematically but that's actually fine and let's say i don't do eight let's say i do nine all right i'll show you it's actually fine later on so two nine and one four 
Okay, and let's pick, uh, let's say 13. 1.67 and then let's pick another one randomly and let's pick, okay, let's pick this one 25 1 and uh, apparently uh, I should if this is your IA uh, you should have record down the full decimal number so here, uh, one little trick I want to tell you, by the way, is if you type 25.00 on Excel, you'll find they help you to auto-correct that to, you know, 25 simply. So, uh, one way to do it is you could highlight the number that you want. You can do it at once as well. And then use the button here called uh, Decrease or Increase Decimal. And you can try to adjust it to the decimal that you like. So for 25, then you can you can auto adjust it to two decimal place, and this is something that you should do for your IA as well because you should understand you have to keep the raw data in the same decimal place. So like what I do here, okay. So this is a very good function you have to use, and you don't have to manually input it. Some people may put oh, if I want to type actually, you can use something like this. There's a symbol I don't know how to call this, uh, but then you can type that and then two five point zero zero. You can do that. But then I don't think this is a smart way to do, and it just take your effort and waste your time. All right, so just use that function. I think that will be the best. And let's just take one more data. Okay, two seven point two five zero point five five. Okay, so I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's pretty good already. And let's just head off to plot the graph, because you know IA you need minimum of seven data, I think eight data will be good enough. So I put insert scatter graph. Yeah, I think that's a one. We have oh I don't know why they have why they have the I on this side. Okay. I actually prefer to have the V on the Y axis if you remember the example. So I think the easiest way to do Okay, let me cheat a little bit just to swap these two. I think there's a smarter way to do. If you know, can let me know. But then I'll just do this. And then here you go. This is a graph. And of course, I can make the graph uh, better, you know, putting up title, label it. Uh, apparently, this is Y. I mean, with this is V and this is the current I. Uh, I can label it, but I, I, I think you can do it by yourself. The most important thing is I figure out the trend line of this which uh, you can right click at the trend line apparently it should be a linear line from our physics concept like understanding from physics and so you have to add uh, the equation all right and this is the equation we have well, let me enlarge it and so if this is the case then uh, when you recall maybe I'll try to copy this Okay, I'll just copy the whole thing and then yeah, put it here. Okay, I'll just put it here. Okay, and I'll write things here. And then if you remember this, uh, then we have V equals to epsilon minus I L, right? And then we recall that slope is negative L and the y-intercept is epsilon itself. So from the equation here, you can tell that the slope is negative 4.9971, and that actually means resistance of the internal resistor is 4.9971 ohm. And so for the epsilon, then that will be according to our result here, 29.994 um, V, and that would be the EMF of the battery, okay? And if you try to compare that with our setup, uh, it's very close, right? You can see it's very close. I think the, the reason why it's not exactly the same, uh, it, I don't think it's something to do with the wired, but some, it should be something to do with the decimal place instead. Uh, when we try to plot the value, I think this 
is more than that. I mean, this is only run up or run down to two decimal place. So that should be more. And so that would give us a more precise number. I mean, uh, we all know that this is a simulation and therefore normally they should give us a perfect result. Okay, but then uh, I think this is what happened simply. But for reality, when you are doing this in the real experiment setting, practically, then uh, wire resistance cannot be ignored sometimes, right? You may have some wire resistance. The other thing you may have, you may need to concern is the temperature of the battery. And so uh, that may be something which will affect the resistance, the internal resistance itself, all right? So that means you should not let your battery to heat up uh, at all. It should remain as a constant temperature. There's actually a very good video uh, that it would tell us uh, some basic technique of doing this experiment. And I think it's brilliant. Right? They make this in very interesting video and some techniques as well. And it will be helpful for you in general to do uh, physics experiment, especially your eye as well. So I'll put a link in the description. I will strongly recommend you to watch it and learn from uh, what they mentioned. Okay, and I think that's pretty much it. So for now, I would want you to uh, try yourself, change the number, try to plot a graph and find out whether or not you can obtain the value from the graph. Okay.